The New York Times has categorized Jerry Seinfeld's humor as keenly observed, carefully timed, contemplative humor about life's minutiae, people's foibles, and mankind's moments of angst. He is perhaps America's favorite comedian, as demonstrated by the fact that his book, Seinfeld Langu or Sign Language, was a bestseller, and that his TV show is one of television's all-time greatest successes. I know that you're tired of hearing it, and I thank you for coming over here tonight, and welcome to the competition at CBS. Yeah. Just so tired of hearing that. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank was, you for having me. I was talking with Dr. Frank Field, the legendary broadcaster in New York television today, and he said, didn't Seinfeld used to come to visit us at, uh, at NBC at 30 Rockefeller Plaza? And I said, I don't know. I will ask him. Did, were, did you ever hang around the television station there, Channel 4? That was the first thing I was going to tell you. You don't remember this. I, I would be amazed if you remember. When I was in college, yeah, I, know. I came to NBC. Me and Chuck Scarborough and Frank. <sighs> Yeah. How could you remember no, that? I remembered that because I, somebody reminded me of it when you went on to great success. I but said, that was would, years before. 1975, 76. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Before you got the job at the at the Bruin Burger on 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 uh, 55th and Third Avenue. That's right. Where you, where you worked for a time. Oh, this is scary. So, what did you think of TV when you came to NBC and saw it? Then were you, were you just a kid in college? Well, at the time, you know, you, uh, if someone had said to me, you know, I know a guy that could perhaps talk to someone and get you a job pulling cable, I would have, I would have said, well, what do I have to do? Yeah. And I would have been doing that the rest of my life because I was just so excited by it. So I, I never thought I'd ever do anything in show business. And when you're a comedian, you don't think you're in show business. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But you were a kid in Massapequa, Long Island, as I recall. Yeah. Uh, your dad had his, uh, a business as a, as a house painter, sign painter back there. Sign painter, yeah. And was he a funny guy? Was there laughter very in your funny. home? Very funny. Yes, very, very funny. But I was never funny around my parents. Uh, it was a, I would never want to make them laugh. For somehow, I felt uncomfortable doing that. Yeah, I understand. But did your dad make you laugh? Oh, yeah. What, yeah. what would he do? Was he... he was a great joke teller, you know. You would yeah. tell him a joke, and then you would hear him tell it, and it was 12 minutes longer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and much funnier. Yeah. And as you're growing up, who are your funny heroes? Who do you see on TV that really make you laugh? You say, this is something that interests me. Cosby. Cosby was really the, the guy when I was growing up. Those albums, I used to listen oh, sure. to those albums and was really hypnotized by, by just... Because Cos, the Cosby style was very... It, it wasn't uh, uh, as jokey as a lot of the comedians I understand. Were, It'd be more know? of a monologue or a story that might yeah. sometimes take him a long time to get to the punch, but when he got there, you knew something had happened. Yeah, and he, he had a way of deconstructing things that I really enjoyed. You know, it was... He would take a scene and then he would take it apart you know, and show you this piece and this piece and look at this piece. And that was, and you know, was another early influence of mine was Gene Shepard. I don't know if you're familiar oh, sure, with his sure, from writing. the radio, W-O-R yeah. radio, sure, yeah. people of the night, yeah. Yeah, he had a way of taking the ordinary and making it very dramatic. And I really sparked to that. And I would say he was probably my, one of my main influences. Gene and Shepard. your ambitions then were to be a comedian? Did you always want to do something that, that, that would be a, a presentation or performance? Or, yeah. did, or did you have other ambitions? Well... I, was very, I wasn't a outgoing person. I didn't think I belonged on stage, didn't really want to do things like that. But I had all these ideas, and I would write them down. And I thought, well, what do you do with this stuff? You know, yeah. I could write an amusing column, I guess. And, but, uh, and then I heard about this guy in New York, Andy Kaufman, who was playing the bongos and crying at the <laughs> improv. Right. And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> so, so we all trooped in one night and went to this dark little club and saw these people get up that were like in jeans and T-shirts and... And we thought, well, this is, this is some new thing, mm -hmm. you know, that it was a new age comedy at the time, you know, that wasn't the way it was done. It was Ed Sullivan and, and those kind of guys. And so it just seemed like something I had to dive off that cliff. And, and see what would happen, you know, when you hit the water. But now you said to me that you weren't really an outgoing, extroverted kid. No? Yeah. No. Around my friends I was, yeah. but not around my parents. So when I told my mother that I had decided I wanted to become a comedian, she went... Okay, you know, I mean, I had, <laughs> sounds pretty funny to me. I've yeah. never said anything funny around them, so they really thought this was a very strange choice for me. What most people don't understand, and I've learned over the years from knowing people who do what you do for a living, is when you go out to dinner or you're with people, you don't say something funny. You know, you do comedy when you're doing your program or when you're doing stand-up, and when you're having dinner, you have dinner. It's yeah. just kind of that simple. Well, you try and say something funny. If I could think of something funny, if I thought of something funny right now, I'd say it. I know that you would. Uh, was there anything funny about working at the Brew and Burger on 3rd Avenue and 55th Street? Well, 
I was working at night as a comedian at that time, so there were a few instances where I would walk over to a table and someone had just paid a $5 cover charge and a two-drink minimum to see me the night before. Right. And they go, well, what kind of comedian are you? You know, I just, I dropped 25 bucks on you last night and yeah. now you're slinging burgers? Yeah, you think you're going to get a tip? What are you yeah. nuts? And then for a time you sold stuff on the streets of New York, I read. Yes, I, I did a lot of, I had about a six-month period, six or eight months there where I was kind of scrambling just to make the... The you rent. know, when I lived in New York, you know, you'd walk the avenues and these guys are there, they're selling all these watches. They knock off your Seiko, they knock mm -hmm. off your Piaget, they knock off your, all these watches. And I thought to myself, where does all this stuff come from? What, 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 like, did you sell jewels? I sold jewelry. I sold uh, umbrellas in the rain. I would stand there in a slicker. By the way, I invented the twirling concept of twirling the umbrella while you're standing there so people see that you're selling them. You know what I I, I started that. You probably also invented the concept that when it wasn't raining, the umbrellas were a dollar, and when it was, was raining, they were ten dollars. <laughs> right. right. But now, the jewelry you sold, where does all that jewelry come from? Back of a truck. Yeah? Yeah. I really can't speak about it. <laughs> and is it real? I, I don't oh, want to put guys in there. What, are you kidding? I don't want to put guys in there. Well, well, what do you think? We're going to be selling artificial diamonds? But then your first paying job would be at the clubs where you worked at night. So you, yeah. paying where you got paid to perform. Yeah, $20, $30 here and there. And uh, that was, I still have the $20 bill. I think my first $20 bill, I still have it. People uh, say that about box. you. Yeah. <laughs> No, they don't. <laughs> and from the clubs to California, tell me about that trip. But one day you say, I've got to go there. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I thought was out here. <laughs> well, you know, you go where the TV cameras are That's right. and the movie cameras. Something about cameras, you know. Comedians, people that are not performing in front of cameras really think that that's performing. And then when you're not doing it in front of a camera, it doesn't count. You're not really doing it. Which is wrong. Which is wrong. Because... Uh, there is something very magical about doing it for an audience that is not, sure. that doesn't happen in front of a camera. But, be that as it may, the, the lure for everyone was to come out here and, I don't know, just get on The Tonight Show. That seemed like the, the highest, farthest dream you could possibly dream. And in dream. 1980, it was the great dream not only for yourself, but for David Letterman mm -hmm. and for Jay Leno and for, and for tens of comedians who said, you know, if I can get a spot with Johnny yeah. uh, and later with Dave, this is how you gain the entree to be where the cameras are. Right, right. To <laughs> be around the cameras. You want to be where those cameras are. <laughs> and eventually you would find yourself in front of the cameras of a, of a probably well-remembered television sitcom called Benson. You were on that. Yeah, I was on that show for three episodes. And uh, I was still living in, I was flying back and forth from New York. I, was, I would only come out here for a few weeks and I would go back to New York. And I was fired from the show, unbeknownst to me, and flew out. Sunday, showed up for work Monday Hi, morning. How are you? Yeah, <laughs> sat down at my table there, and I see everyone's got a script. Where's my script? <laughs> I don't see a script. <laughs> and, Is there any reason I don't see yeah, a script? Yeah, where's the script? And the AD, you know, associate director. Yeah, calls you over, says, uh, "You're not on the show." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I man. said, "Well, then I'm leaving." <laughs> I was. Uh, not enough. That's how they told you, no script. They forgot to tell me oh. that somehow I didn't get the call. And, you know, you shower, you drive over there. It's uh, very strange. It's, it's, so the other actors are looking at you, and they're going, you know, we killed you off. I you know. know. And, Jerry, can I tell you something? They never forget to call. <laughs> <laughs> they always call, believe me. Take it from one who's received a lot of calls, okay? <laughs> the, the most brutal way I've ever seen it done, I used to work for a TV station in Georgia where they had a time clock. When you came in, you punched in to work. Even if you did the 11 o'clock news, you punched in. Or puppet theater, you punched in. And you knew that you weren't going on the air if you came in and your time card wasn't in the rack. <laughs> and as you turned around, the personnel supervisor was there with your final check. He gave it to you and you walked out the door. That's, that's how you knew. But otherwise, they, they make the calls. Anyway, we will continue here with Jerry Seinfeld and you on the, uh, the toll-free line. Uh, Jerry, of course, does his own television program. You can watch that. He's got sign language. You can buy that. And he's on the cover of the new TV guide. You can pick that up as well. So That's fire it. up the color teenies and yes, sir. watch the pictures as they fly through, fly the, through air. the air. As I said to Mr. Seinfeld when he did his little color teeny routine, you know, you do yours, I'll do mine. Here is Stephanie on the toll-free in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, and welcome to CBS, Steph. Yes, hello. 
Hello, Tom. Hello, uh, Stephanie. I, I'm a big fan. I just Thanks. want to say keep up the good work. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. I know uh, you're dying to get to Jerry. Go. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Jerry, I, I'm such a huge fan. I know you hear that all the time. Oh, thank you. I never heard it from you. Oh, well, that's true. Well, you have now. Um, I, just, I just love your show, and I want to ask you when you're going to start doing movies. You know, I, I'd love to see you in a movie. Well, here's my feeling on movies. If you go to a bad movie, it's about two and a half hours. If you make a bad movie, it's about eight months. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm very careful about things that I do. That's why I'm on this program. Oh. And uh, I, plus, right now, I haven't got the time because I would, if I did a movie, I would be involved in it from day one and page one. And so that's going to be a big involved thing if I ever do it. And I'd have to wait till after the series is over. I'm but, sure it'll be. But thank you for too. trying to uh, promote me. When, oh. when, when you say until after the series is over, have you picked when that's going to be? Or is any. No. No. I, I, I've told this story before, but to me it's like a, you're at dinner with friends and you're having coffee after the dinner mm -hmm. and you're sitting there and there's that moment where somebody goes, all right, let's go, you know. I and, got you. Yeah, yeah, very and good. I'm, you, what, and nobody plans that moment, but you feel it and everyone knows it. Everybody knows when it's time to get up and leave the dinner table. Yeah. yeah. So. Stephanie, I'm glad you called and thanks for your compliments. Tom, can I just say to Jerry, I, sure. I hope that you realize the joy that you bring to people with your show. I mean, I just, I just don't want you to forget that. I mean, oh. such joy. I mean, I love your show. It's like an addiction. I mean, I'm not crazy or anything. I just love it. Oh, well, that's sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, Stephanie. Good night, Tom. Bye-bye now. Bye. I noticed that you always have a smile on your face. How do you do that? <laughs> I, I don't hey, like by Bill Clinton always said, well, he's the president. He should yeah. have a smile on his face. But I mean, you, like now, your teeth are showing. You have a, you know, you're always like, well, this is pretty cool, don't you think? I mean, here yeah. I am. I know what I'm, I'm making. Five hundred. I feel stupid. I'm, <laughs> like this all. <laughs> I'm making five hundred and nineteen dollars here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making five sixty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Get my agent on the phone. What makes for funny? You were talking about Cosby and how you watched him uh, deconstruct scenarios when, when, when he was doing his work that you liked. What makes for funny for science? Well, for me, <clears throat> I, uh, I only know my own thing, and that, and that is rigorous analysis of really something that doesn't even deserve a second look. Right. I understand what you're that, saying. That, that's what's funny to me. I mean, I, I was talking in the dressing room to somebody about Mission Impossible, and I was saying I love how in movies... If you can dive in front of an explosion, you can ride it. <laughs> it seems to be the way that you, an explosion will never overtake you. Because in the human mind, if I dive, nothing could catch up with that. Gotcha, gotcha. You know? And, I, and I, that's, uh, that, that's my idea of, uh, of looking at something that people don't look at. You know, if I watch your show and I do, what strikes me about it is it is essentially a very simple premise every episode. Mm -hmm. there, there's not an awful lot of convoluted plot that we have to concern ourselves with, and it often reminds me, I say to myself, and tell me if I'm wrong, you've almost borrowed a little bit from Ozzy and Harriet. Mm -hmm. Remember, <laughs> uh, the whole episode was Ozzy lost the hammer. That was the whole thing for a half right. an hour, but it was funny and it worked. And in your case, it's uh, Jerry's going out for a sandwich. That's all it is. Yeah, but it's not quite that, because okay. it's got to be for example, we did a show about waiting for a table in a Chinese restaurant. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, somehow that's funny, you know? Yes, it is. And then, <laughs> I don't know we've why. All, we've all done it, though. Yeah. yeah. But it's not just because we've all done it. It's that certain thing. It's got to be plucked out of, the, out, of, out of the whole field. You know, you've got to find that one ear of corn that's... And do things happen to you or your writers in their real lives that you'll come in and say, man, have I got an... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, most of the stuff is something that's, that's happened to... Someone was talking today about uh, they went to a doctor and the doctor wrote down on the, she, she saw on the, her, her chart that it said difficult. You know, and it was like the doctor was like, it was like a comment section in the report card. Yeah, on grading, the yeah, yeah, grading. And it's like, well, what is that, you know? <laughs> what do you mean difficult? You I mean, you're difficult. Supposed to, it was supposed to be dealing yeah. with the medical problem. Yeah, doc, you know? I'd like another opinion. Yeah. Well, here is one, you're ugly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually happened to her, and so, you know, that becomes an idea for something. Uh, Michael on the toll-free in Whitby, Ontario. Hi, and welcome to CBS. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jerry. I'm I, fine, I just thanks. wanted to say you guys do great jobs on both your shows. I watch you all the time. Uh, thanks. 
Uh, I'm really nervous. <laughs> oh, don't be. You're you're among friends and simple folk here, Michael. Well, simple folk. I mean, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, simple like American my, folk. My uh, sisters and I, like, he's our hero and stuff. We've watched him ever since the first episode. If you're not up to this, there's a lot of people behind you. Well, <laughs> no one no one except me and my sister remembers the, the funny uh, big, huge window you had in the old apartment, the original apartment. And that no one believes me ever that Kramer had, like, regular hair or nothing. So. I don't remember the big, huge window. I, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, where, well, now where you have the small window, there was a big, like, it had, like, uh, it was like, it was like wood. And you know, was... Michael, I can't believe we're taking valuable television and radio <laughs> okay, network sorry, time sorry, to discuss sorry. the size of a window. For okay, now. well, my question was to Jerry, and I was going to ask him uh, if he has a favorite issue of Superman or not. Because <sighs> I know you're a big I like fan. the fist fight with Lex Luthor on the planet with the Red Sun. Oh, I don't yeah? know if you know that one. Well, yeah, but that's... Like... Anything with the red sun, where okay. he didn't have his powers, I, I liked him. Yeah. Did, what did you think when they killed him a few years ago? It, it smacked of a little desperation, frankly. Oh, okay. Okay, I was just curious what you thought about that, because I'm right. a big fan and stuff. Well, thanks a lot. Michael, you're good to be with us. Thank okay, you, sir. Okay, thanks, Tom. I also like the Bizarro Superman. Do you remember that one? Sure do. The guy who was unshaven and his hair was messed yep. up and he used bad grammar. My favorite was always, I liked, <laughs> I liked Superman. Me thinks. <laughs> yeah, I liked Superman a lot, but I liked uh, Captain Marvel because when Billy Batson, remember the kid who was the, uh, uh, the, the cub reporter, he had to say Shazam before he could turn into Captain Marvel. You know, Clark just went in the, in, in the John and took off his clothes. He was Superman. Right. That was it, you know, which <laughs> from his mouth to God's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told now in New York City there's something called the Seinfeld Factor. I heard about this too this today. Is, this, is, this is people tell me that uh, people in real estate now, people will notice something that they think they've seen on your show or it's near an area where your show has been done and they they will buy real estate ba based on its connection to the Seinfeld show. It's well, pretty the amazing. Show, yeah, the show has become kind of a, a, a focus point of the show of, of the city as opposed to the normal things which is what is the crime and what's the economy and people saying well this is where that show the people from that show are. So it's that now. Yeah. Which is amazing. But just think not only are you entertaining all of America and making NBC wealthier than they have any right to be, you're also helping sell real estate in New York City. I have something to fall back on. Jerry, we can't thank you enough. We will continue with Mr. Seinfeld here and you on the toll free as time permits. We'll be right back after this break. <music> Kathy on the toll free in uh, Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. Hello. 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 How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Has anybody else done the Tom and Jerry bit yet tonight? Nobody's done Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Tom. Hello, Jerry. We, Hi. Were, we were hoping nobody would, but our hello. Sorry. Your locks. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get right to the question, because I know there are probably other people. <laughs> Wait, Kathy, Jerry had a message for you. Uh-oh. We're moving, we're moving on. Go ahead, Kathy. No, it's okay. Um, I was just wondering if you ever regret making yourself so accessible to the public. Um, because you've made the show about your own life, and there's no getting away from the fact that your character is also Jerry Seinfeld, how do you feel about people, you know, they, we feel like we're in your lives. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's an interesting question, and I actually uh, feel that it makes it easier that way, because I have nothing to hide, <laughs> and, and no one's going to see anything that they don't expect to see, and uh, it's always, to me, it's always been easier to be myself, which is why I wanted to be a comedian, and why when I did the show, I didn't play a teacher. Because mm -hmm. I, I, know, I know this routine, you know. Well, we so we do appreciate it. It's easy. Yeah. It, we do appreciate it. It's, Thank it's you. Very, it's very nice to have someone play themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's very relaxing for me. You know, I, everybody else is thinking about their, their character. You don't, have to be, you, don't have, you don't need any motivation whatsoever, do no, you? No, I just walk from the other side of the cameras to this side, you yeah. know. Well, yeah. I'm talking now, I'm talking there. Well, what's the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? Anyway, Kathy. really just lazy. Uh, as Jerry says, he, he, <laughs> Jerry says he loves your, uh, he loves your locks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good night, Kath. Good night. How do you manage to keep private stuff private and public stuff public? You know, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's the public you, and I, I know you're very giving with people who want to take your picture. As you demonstrated, I'm told, walking in this building tonight, there were 100 people looking to take Jerry Seinfeld's picture, and you allow them to do that. How do you keep private what you want to keep private? Um, don't have anything private that needs to be private. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't... I'm not... Uh, there's nothing about my life that you would see out in public that embarrasses me mm -hmm. or makes me uncomfortable you know so 
I suppose if there were, that I, I would have some tension there, but, you know, I'm just uh, living. Is it easier for you to stop and have your picture taken when you're by yourself uh, as opposed to when you're with somebody, possibly a lady friend, uh, a couple of friends, whatever? It's much easier to be with people. When it, it I'm is. out on my own, uh, I, it, that's a little scary because you have no excuse really to get away. People can corner you and you can't get away. And that, that can be, and they have the advantage, which is the difficult thing when, you know, they know me. People come up to me and they just start talking to me. Yeah. You know, and I always say, just, if I could just get an excuse me before the, uh, so in episode seven last year, you know, we're walking together and we're talking. And what is the best thing about celebrity? What, what's well, everything. I would say celebrity is 99% great. And I can't stand celebrities that whine about yeah, being okay, celebrities good, because good. The, the power and the perks, I mean, it's flights, rental cars, hotels, restaurants, movies, whatever the difficulty is, the person behind the counter is really going to try and help you now. Yeah. And this is, this is fantastic to me. Do you find, for example, that when you give your American Express card, Yes, I don't have to say, do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> and yours probably would never come back saying, I'm sorry, this card is uh, un unvalid or unauthorized. Right. That, that would not happen to your card. It better not, huh? That has happened to me. That has Get happened to me, here. yeah. And I, I just said, do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> <laughs> Gene, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Hi. Hi. Yes, Hello, Tom. How are you? Go ahead, Gene. Uh, Jerry, I just was wondering your opinion on the article in TV Guide uh, that... Uh, I consider it a slap in the critics. face. <laughs> what was that? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, put your show up against the greatest uh, honeymooners. I always liked All in the Family. I just wanted to know how you felt about uh, how your show stacked up. Oh, well, it's, uh, I felt... Uh, I know it's tough to rate yourself, but... No, I would never uh, compare myself to any of those shows. Uh, I would. I think okay, Tom, I, what would your opinion be? I th well, what would your opinion be, too, Gene? But I think 20 years from now or when enough time has passed that, that, that this program is viewed uh, as the Honeymooners is viewed, yeah. as Jack Benny is viewed, as I Love Lucy is viewed now, this show will be revered. This will be, th this will be honored by the Broadcast Museum of the Future as one of the greats of all time. There's well, no, then I'm no, no not question. making enough money. I would money. have to think so. <laughs> I am not. Well, as a matter of fact, you're not. <laughs> but the, I mean, $519. But, but neither, was the, uh, neither did Jackie Gleason make enough money yeah. or Milton Berle make enough no, money. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with whatever I make. I don't yeah. even know what it is. Yeah. But uh, just to be compared with those shows is uh, it's a cliche, I know, but is, is uh, overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Jane, I guess you it's can't over, really uh, feel the the the, uh, the feeling of uh, how good it is being in it yourself. Now, you, it's you know it's not good to think about things like that. I, I, I'm a firm believer in uh, hey, look, we're not hitting any traffic. You know, <laughs> I, I don't say things like that. <laughs> anyway, okay. Gene, thanks for calling. Thank you. Have a nice evening, sir. You too. And life after Seinfeld is. I would really like to um, get back to being uh, a real stand-up comedian again. Okay and really be talking about what people are thinking about and speaking as a, a person of my age in this year because I have, my act has not been, an act has to be, con it has to be on a respirator all the time. Mm -hmm. It has to be constantly being pumped oh, oxygen. Yep. And working on the show, I don't get to do that and I miss that and I feel like my act is behind me now and I want it to catch up with my life and the way I think now and the way the world is now. And I miss that experience of just performing live. And I love to play uh, old vaudeville houses. That's what I like to do. Well, I hope you get to do that when you want to, but I hope you stay at the table for some time to come. Thanks so much for coming over tonight. Oh, thanks, We Tom. think the world of you here, as we have since you visited us back at NBC when we were all kids. <laughs> and much success, and thanks again for joining us. My pleasure. Jerry Seinfeld is the guest. Calvin Trillant is right around the corner. We'll be right back after this short break. Jerry. Thank you.